Hey, so... Good, hey! <laughs> hey, how are you, Tammy? <laughs> I'm good, how are you, Sam? Yeah, we're both kind of new to this, so... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I okay. said, we'll just have a conversation, talk about... Sure. You kind of always, uh, somebody I knew is an interesting person, doing interesting things, always very positive. So when you came here to do some flyers for your Zumba, I thought, maybe I'll interview you. Yeah, cool. See how it goes. So awesome. can you tell me, what are you doing now exactly full-time? <coughs> what is it? Uh, full-time, I run the Live Out Loud movement. And what that actually is, is a fitness company um, specializing in Zumba fitness, different forms of Latin, Latin cardio fitness dance, um, as well as laughter yoga. So I go into schools and senior homes and studios and you have corporate places. Zumba? I do actually. <laughs> My oldest student is ninety four. Wow. Yeah. That is awesome. Yeah. I was yeah. like, she's fit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so there's Zumba and dancing or Zumba and different dancing? Uh, Zumba is dancing. Yeah. It incorporates in um, like Bollywood, reggaeton, salsa, swing, cha cha, merengue, kind of like a mash of all different cultures right. into one class. And what makes a Zumba is that you're basically doing it as an aerobic continuous... Exactly. There's like an aerobic component, so it takes yeah. all of the, the specialties of dance and stepping and then adding in like an aerobic fitness component. So you're sweating and burning lots of calories. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I was interested in just getting into something and my partner Nino, who you know, yeah. is like a triathlete, and he's like, come run, come <laughs> swim, you know, come bike with me, and yeah. those are all three things that I was just not going to ever do, so yeah. I went on YouTube, actually, and I typed in Latin cardio fitness dance, and Zumba came up. Actually, I just put in cardio fitness dance, right, and right. Zumba came up, and I saw it, and I was like, I have to do that. Yeah. So I became a student, and then my instructor encouraged me to become an instructor. I want to get into this from a, just kind of thinking of maybe the potential people watching it from, from Arctic's point of view, the, the, sure. the small business people. Okay. I want to think of it as a, as a small business, because you, you went from working full-time, doing it a couple hours. How did the transition happen to the full-time? Um, what ended up happening was... I saw that I was being asked, well, to be honest with you, I started looking at it and seeing the different ways of classes that I could take on and seeing the number of classes in which I could teach in a day. And then I started realizing that the amount of income that I was making was nearly matching what I was making mm. doing 40 hours a week in, in an office management job. So. When I saw that, I realized that it was probably time to just like take the leap and see what came from it. So the forty hours compared to how many hours of teaching? Roughly? Oh, I was doing about I was doing about twelve to thirteen hours oh, so that a week of was, teaching. That was even to your full time job. Yeah. Good, because yeah. I know you're doing more than that now. Yeah, I teach about twenty to twenty four classes a week. And and you have an instructor working for you. I do, yeah. yeah. And, how, and, and how does it work? She does lessons and you, you get a percentage? Sorry to be so business-like. Yeah, no, that's I'm okay. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's actually yeah. how it works yeah. is um, I pay her a certain percentage. Right. Um, so I work out how much over like the course of an eight-week program in a company, I work out how much it will cost me to pay her. And then I look at like a 20% above that. Yeah. to cover any of my expenses or to have right. a little bit of a profit right. Right. on top of it. Good. So. And are you thinking of getting more selectors? Is that part of the plan? Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. that's why I'm doing a lot of building this year. Is um, I'm building and working really hard this year to start to hire more instructors to take on some of those classes yeah. that I have. So I'm building the clientele, building the space to bring in more instructors. And... Um, I know you more. Of, you know you're a fun person. You like to have a lot of fun. So I'm gonna get to that part in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have much of a serious side. That's for sure. Um, but I'm, see, see, that's what. As I was reading your blog in preparation for this, I was kind of trying to. You remind me a bit of an artist, like a musician or something that does their stuff. And I'm always curious, like, how do they manage the business side of things? Because mm, I'm yeah. in a way just more or less doing the business side of things, and then gets pretty complicated and all the systems and everything so that's why I'm yeah, kind of asking about it because I think there may be 
there's some people that are thinking of doing it and see what skills are needed. So, yeah. so how do you manage the other parts of the business? Are you good at it, like the organizing, the scheduling, yeah. the bookkeeping? No, that's, <laughs> that's awesome questions because definitely I would consider myself to be more of an artist and um, going into actually doing the business end of it, it really took something for me to actually sit down and go, you need to know how the finances work. Yeah. You need to know how to do this stuff. So um, I did hire a business coach Oh, for a good. while um, I he was with me for about a year and a half um, and I don't have him now but it's not it's just because of where I've grown to yeah. that I've I've figured out how to manage things um, one of the I, I highly recommend people get a business coach if you know where look do you get one um, I actually got mine out of Seattle actually very interesting so online just no yeah. I a friend of mine who was from Denver I was with her in Seattle and I was talking to her I said you know I really want to take this to the next level but I'm afraid to leave my job and I think I need a coach and and we happened to show up at this place and her friend John walked over and she's like, oh, John, I haven't seen you in forever. What are you doing now? And he said, I'm a business coach. <laughs> and she said, up. Tammy, meet John. <laughs> and uh, we had a call, and, and yeah. I just knew he was the right fit for me. And you really know when you have that connection yeah. with a coach if it's really going to be right. the right fit. So, what, what, what would you say were the key things that John helped you with? Um, a, f a few things that he really helped me with were... Um, creating an action plan every day, like creating. Nice. <laughs> Checking this recording. I yeah. Just have a spare oh yeah. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Let me come. Let me go no, back. Yeah. Start again. Yeah. Um, create. One of the things that I work on work on weekly now is creating an action plan for the week. So what is it that needs to get accomplished this week? Um, let me back up. Inside of creating the year. Mm -hmm. So what is it by the end of 2014 that I plan on accomplishing? Then what is it in nine months from today's date, in six months, in three months, to one month, to one week? So we do that planning at the beginning of the year whenever you start working with your coach. Um, and then from there, creating an action plan each week. And what I really liked about the coaching that I got, because I'm kind of more of a artistic kind yeah. of person was that we didn't just take on what needed to happen in the business it was also what needed to happen in my life what am I committed to in volunteering my time what am I committed to you know for traveling and so having it all kind of mapped out yeah. which gave me more freedom to be with what I needed to with the business because I could see all the other pieces so it wasn't just solely so, so balancing a bit of your private life with the business yeah, life. Yeah, absolutely. I, I had concerns that I would lose myself in the business rather than... That can happen. <laughs> yeah, you know, like where all of a sudden yeah. you're just doing the business, that's all you do, and yeah. you forget about everything else. So um, every single day I get, uh, before I go to bed, I take 15 minutes. Uh, I wrote about that today. Is yeah, taking I 15, today. Yeah. Okay, taking 15 minutes actually and just getting out of my head all of what I know that I need to do the next day so that I can because I'm a busy body I don't sleep very well so I have to get it out so that I don't have those thoughts through the night mm. like it's in a it's in a planner I know that tomorrow that's what I'm working on so that I can stay focused yeah. and I focus it into all areas of my life my personal life my business life and my volunteering life and then I put all the different things I need to do and at what time I need to do them the next day. So I just really recommend people like calendar it out. I know that sometimes it's like, oh, I don't want to calendar everything in my life, yeah. but you, you'll you drop the ball if you don't. Yeah, I know that for myself, being in business for so many years, you kind of get into a routine. So you don't, I, as you're saying it, I'm thinking I haven't done that in a while. Yeah, planning. yeah. Especially if you're yeah. new at it. Like, yeah. you know, I really noticed um, I have to put in there, do my finances because numbers are not my favorite thing. I, I, was, I was guessing that. Yeah, yeah numbers yeah. are just like, oh, yeah. I don't want to know. I just yeah. want the money to show up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
and it's so easy, I think, in business to do a lot of stuff and think you're busy. Yeah. And then realize you're churning water. Nothing is really staying at the exactly. end of the day. Exactly. You just look busy. Yeah. We went through an analysis with that in our business a few years ago where a lot of the complicated tiny orders were costing us more than were worth it. And it's just like yeah. takes away time from the uh, more serious orders. Exactly. So you have to, yeah, you have to find what you do. Yeah. Yeah. And I found that definitely with teaching, there's certain places um, that I've had to let go of because it just wasn't profitable. Um, but I really loved the people that yeah. I was with, so well, I was like kind of the catch. You get that through your volunteer, I think, you, part, you get that kind of yeah, fulfillment. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah, and that's important. Yeah. Now, so, so you made, how, how scary was it to leave the job, the full-time job? Um, it, it was pretty scary. Like I, I had the thought, it's so funny because I told my employer six months before I was ready to go and um, I was so scared to tell them because I was scared of what it looked like yeah. actually leaving and then I told them and I was lucky I had very supportive employers they're like we know you're out to do really great things because yeah. I was doing office management work they're like we can't keep you at a desk <laughs> anymore you're like yeah. ah so um but it was really it was it was scary but what had it work was actually having had a coach and someone saying you can do this right because you had the coach before you left yeah so I think that might be a good insight for people is to you start part-time you still have yeah. your income and maybe get the coach before you even jump ahead yeah, yeah well and in part of that planning that I was talking about starting a year out we started that year out and I said yeah. to John I said by the end of 20, what was it? I guess it was the, by the end of 2012, I said, I want to be like looking at leaving. And then I was actually, I was done January 31st of 2012. Nice. So, so, so now that you, so, so you leave the place, you have your business, you have some clients. How, how do you, how do you get more clients? How do you find more people? What's your marketing? A lot of it um, comes word of mouth and through social media. I use social media tools a lot for my business through blogging, um, through offering different sales to my current clients who then like start to talk to other right. clients. Um, I've been fortunate in the school systems to have some good contacts that have connected me to who I needed to to get to a larger audience in the phys ed departments. Um, so a lot of it has been word of mouth. I use I use posters as well. I find yeah. posters to be very effective. Where do you put them? Um, I put them everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> just kind of guerrilla marketing. Yeah, I'm just like I'm all over the place. Yeah. I I find a place I can hang it. I hang yeah. it. Um, I go and I talk to my local because my my main studio is right across the street from my house. That was yeah kind of my game to play and. So there's little like nail salons or uh, hair shops or restaurants and I ask them if I can hang my posters either like in their bathroom or yeah. in the front foyer. And so not even in one of those boards, you just ask for beyond that, even places that don't have that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. And I create, I create with them as well. I do a monthly newsletter to my clients and I created a, a spot on my newsletter that's called Community Corner. Oh, that's smart. So yeah. people who support my business, I feature their business. Yeah. So it's kind of like it's a given. So you have something give to offer them when you're asking for that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's smart. Yeah. I, I used to put my, you know, little postcards and everything on boards, but I never asked for people to do that. So that's yeah, that's kind of it makes them beyond. feel really important. Yeah. And I get them as a contact as well, and I. I say, listen, I'm going to send out my newsletter and you're going to be featured in it yeah. this week. And then they're excited and then they can show their clients and it's a win-win. Let me ask you about this an area that I've been working on myself and mm -hmm. social media. So specifically with social media, I know you have a good presence on Facebook. I know you have a personal page and a, because we're friends. Yeah. And, and, I know, <laughs> and I have a personal page and you have the fan page. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So and so, is that your main place? I know you have your blog. Is yeah, um, my main place is my Facebook page. Then I have a Facebook group no, as well. Um, but you, the page is the one that really seems to get a lot of hits. A lot of questions come up 
on it, and then um, my blog. Yeah. My my blog. But how do people find your blog? Is it through um, the keywords or tag? A few different places. I use um, Ace of Sales as a platform for my database, and through theirs, you can have like all the links to your social media. So every time I send out a newsletter, I say, you know, check out my website yeah. or the page on Facebook or Twitter. Or Is that so? It's Ace of Sales. It's like. A C E and of what, sales. what exactly is it? I'm actually not familiar with Oh, it's like a it's a database that you can put all of your clientele into. Okay, yes. Um there's lots of it's things. It's like a CRM, I think. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Okay, yeah. Exactly. We use our own own system, but yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, it's it costs about twenty dollars a month. Um, yeah. it manages all my contacts and I can put in there anything special about a specific client. Yeah. Yeah. I really like to get to know my clientele really well and know like when their birthdays are coming up and specific things that they like like especially in dance or do they have some kind of health issue that I need to be aware of yeah. so I put it all in my database but then I can also send like uh, newsletters from there two column newsletters one column right. branded emails and inside of the in everything that I send them it comes with a connection to go to one of my social medias so they can click over right. from there. So a lot of people do that to to connect to the So you have website. the Facebook, you have the Ace of Sales and your blog. Is there anything else on social media? Do you do any uh, let me do think do for a Twitter second. Or <laughs> Twitter or Pinterest or You know what? I have Twitter <laughs> and I, I um just I haven't had my focus no. on Twitter. It's I hard have to do LinkedIn everything. It's too hard to do everything. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's I find um the I find the thing is, is through social media, find the thing that really speaks to you and works for yeah. you um, and stick to it and, yeah. and master it so that you're getting the best out of it. Yeah, I started doing a lot of work with um, Google Plus. Yeah, I've got <laughs> one of those too. <laughs> and it's not so much, you know, that I need, everybody's like, I don't need another, another social media, I have too much to handle right now. Yeah. But Google Plus, obviously, because Google is, owns the search world almost, um, it's important for us at least to be there, so kind of brings the, up our search results. So for sure. If you happen to be our followers on Google Plus, and you happen to look for a t-shirt or a cap or anything, then we will pop up there with because we, oh, you know, so the more people that we have, even uh, I think, it's yeah, it's uh, even I think if a friend of yours likes um, follows us on Google Plus, so it's very important for the search. But yeah. Interesting. I should actually look <laughs> into that more then because yeah, I become, wonder about it. Yeah, but plus yeah. one a couple of issues I have with Facebook, and like I told you, it's been more of a conversation. That's yeah, okay, yeah. Is Facebook. Lately, they, they really tighten how many people you reach. So we may yeah, have. We were talking right? about that. We have yeah. 2,200 fans. Yeah. And we reach 180, maybe, if we're lucky, right? Yeah. And then we have to pay them to reach more. Yeah, I And don't then like I just that. saw something that if you pay for the ads for Facebook, they're not always legitimate um, clicks, which is weird. So anyway, there's a lot of issues. I with Facebook. actually wonder about that <laughs> sometimes <laughs> yeah. too. And I've, I've done advertising yeah. and I try and target it. So. It's 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 a bit tricky, so yeah. yeah. That's it's good to not put all your eggs in one basket. That's for sure. But yeah, sounds like I you're doing so. a lot of different things. So that's good. Yeah, yeah. I've used I I use the the blogging a lot and Facebook yeah. as a platform for the blogging. Yeah. Um, I have used the Facebook, the the promotion where you pay like you can pay like yeah. five dollars to see how many clicks will come through and stuff. Yeah. And um, I've questioned it myself. I'm not a hundred percent sold on it. What I, what I would do instead of that, that's the one that, that can cause some issues. Um, what I, this is at least what I read, is the better one is when you put a little ad and you target it to specifics, so only to people yes. in Toronto, only over some age, only, uh, you get yeah. all these criteria. So Not the yeah. whole world. Right. Like, like I could literally set, put an ad only for event people who like event planning. Yeah. Because those are a lot of our customers, they need stuff for their Of events, course, so. yeah, yeah. So uh, that could be an interesting. It's a bit more targeted, I think it's a bit more legit, but as far yeah. as what you get. Um, so we talked about the, uh, how people find you. I saw, and one, uh, one thing I want to tell you about your blog is, first of all, I really liked it, because I was preparing for this and I was reading it, as I said. I l what I like about it is you're not afraid to have your own voice, which I think is really mm. important. You just, sounds like you're talking. 
and kind of from the heart. So I really enjoy yeah, it. Yeah, I kind of, yeah. I, I do a lot of reading as well. And people that I get inspired by and read are people yeah. that just speak yeah, it as exactly. it is. Exactly, not, so. not putting on a big show. Yeah. Um, I noticed one of your blogs that you gave away a cooling towel prize. Do you remember that? I did, yeah. <laughs> I, I was just curious, how did that go? Good, actually. Yeah. Um, I, I'm one of these people, like last summer was very, very hot, yes. right? So I found this towel, this Arctic cooling cloth. I thought yeah. it was the coolest thing ever. Yeah. And I'd never been one to carry a towel with me, which is crazy because you sweat so right. much in class. And I had this awesome cooling towel, so everybody's like, I need one of those. Yeah. I, uh, we actually had a, a couple different ones from trade shows and it was really cool because you one of them you put water on and you just wave yeah. and it's very cold surprisingly yeah. it's almost like an air condition and the other one was just wave it and it was they both were nice and I was, yeah. I was actually thinking of doing a promotion of that so I was kind of interested in that but yeah it's it's a great product and yeah. like my I give I every now and then I just give one to a random yeah person who comes to my class I do like yeah. random stuff like that like that's here nice. you're the lucky person <laughs> for the month look what yeah. you get you that's know and nice. then they feel special and yeah, that's true. it's good um, what, what what would you say um, if somebody is like thinking of starting on their own what would you what advice would you give them I know we talked we covered it a bit but just a yeah. couple of key points a couple of key things definitely speak to a coach and don't give up it's the biggest thing like just no matter what I got to tell you in the last year of doing it myself it's it hasn't been all sunshine and roses there's times where you just go what am I doing and it, you just don't give up yeah just keep just going keep going that's for sure yeah now I, I just want to talk a bit more about the fitness part of it sure um, you, you mentioned in the blog a bit about your, your personal journey with fitness. Do you mm -hmm. want to tell me a bit about that? Oh, it's <laughs> been an interesting journey for sure. Yeah. Um, let me see where to start. <laughs> I, I know, I know you like this. Um, I see yeah. your eyes like this. No, no. Yeah. Um, honestly, it, about how old am I now? Okay, old enough. Okay, <laughs> about um, 15 years ago, I was weighing in at about 170 plus pounds. Um, I was smoking, just really unhealthy. I was going through a really bad time in my life. And um, I ended up going through a divorce. And I actually listened to Tony Robbins in my car one day. And I was lighting a cigarette. And he said, you don't smoke because you want to get cancer. You smoke because you're stressed. And when I could put the connection of smoking mm -hmm. with stress, I went, well, then I won't smoke and I won't be stressed anymore. And I threw them out the window wow. and I haven't smoked since. But then with quitting smoking, then I started putting on more weight too. So uh, the first part of my journey really was at that time, I found a friend of mine who was a personal trainer. And um, I was living back in Saskatchewan at the time. And we used to get the key from the lady who ran the gym because I was too embarrassed to go to the gym okay. in public. So he would take me after hours and we'd watch movies and we'd just yeah. be on the treadmill the whole time and, and just work out and work out. So did you have no problem through the training losing the weight and getting fit? No, you know what, I, it didn't take much because I was committed to it. Mm -hmm. When you're committed to it, it, it's not a problem and you can actually see where you, you plateau. Um, one of the things that's kind of funny now is I don't know if you read about when I went to the doctor recently. Yes. <laughs> it's so, so yeah. funny to me. Um, and this is why I talk to a lot of my clients about it's not about pounds. Like women yeah. get obsessed with the scale and pounds and I have to be this particular weight. Um, it's not about that at all. It's about inches. So if you can throw the scale out and just go to the measuring of the inches, you'll actually see that... Um, you actually are a lot more fit. When I went to the doctor recently, I stepped on the scale and she made me get off it like three times <laughs> to recalibrate this scale. I'm like, what is going on? And she's like, the scale says you're 141 pounds, but you can't be that. <laughs> and I'm like, it's muscle. Yeah. So muscle weighs more than fat. So right. I tell my ladies in class all the time, I go, listen, if you went by the body mass index, I'm actually overweight. That so 
<laughs> it's had a lot of them throw out their yeah. scale and say, okay, just measure me and let's go from there. Yeah. So I, I offer that now as a service. It's not as a need. It's always like whatever market you're in, yeah. it's like, what's the need of the client? Sure. You know, what are they really looking for? A lot of my women are looking for healthy choices for foods. That's why I love cooking. It actually supports me to give them ideas of easy recipes yeah. and then measure measurements. So my uh, business partner Rafi and I have been on a weight loss thing for a while now. Yeah, so you should come to Zumba. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. We, we, we'll talk about it in a minute about how people feel <laughs> when they're up. But we we were doing a few things. We we're doing. I don't know if you saw that thing. The Australian guy that does the juicing, Joe Cos, and I forget what it's called. Like reboot your life with juicing. Oh yeah, it was called. I have it, heard about it was that. Was called. Yeah. Um, Sick fat and almost dead. There's a free movie online. Oh wow, yeah. wow! So my Rafi lost about forty-five pounds. Wow! <laughs> in juicing, doing like Ju mostly, he would have like a juice in the morning. He'd have a salad at lunch. Yeah. And then at night, he I don't eat meat. He does. He'd have a piece of meat and salad, and that's yeah. it. Like he's been doing that. But then he's also exercising five times a week, mm -hmm. about ninety minutes. I don't. Do, I lost about half of what he did because I am not as uh, aggressive as he is, but. So I did a combination of that, and there's another that called Five Two. Have you heard that? No, that one. It's I apparently heard of. my sister told me it's, as they say, big in Europe. It really is big in Europe. Yeah. It's basically five days you eat normal, and two days you eat very light. And psychologically, for someone like me who likes to eat, it was easier to know today is that day that I'm eating a quarter of my calories, mm. and then if I want something, what tomorrow? You must have that. Yeah. But um, so that between that, yeah, I lost about yeah, about. 23 pounds so wow. but it's not just pounds it's the waist yeah so I actually do have a yeah a take measure and I'm oh good good yeah, you so should yeah. I, I agree so I think that but I was thinking about you when you talking about the Zumba because I can't see myself doing Zumba myself at this point but mm -hmm. I found I really enjoy ping pong just really enjoy it right it's a sport you know and yesterday <laughs> I met a friend at the spin club in Toronto and we played for two hours yeah and we were sweating at that of course and it didn't feel like it was. It felt less difficult than five minutes in a ten minute. Yeah, because it was so much fun, right? So yeah. that's probably where you feel when you do Zumba. Right? Yeah, you know what? Here's the thing. I tell people. I I tell people, come try it. If it's not for you, I get it. Find the thing that that yeah. lights you up that you'll actually go and do. For some people, it really is getting on a treadmill. Like yeah. they're like, yeah, I love this. Yeah. I can't stand it personally. Yeah. I don't condemn anybody for doing it. Yeah. <laughs> but. Find what you love and do lots of it. That's yeah. what there is, you know. Yeah, for sure, for sure. It so, yeah, for sure. And ping pong would be a definite. But uh, I've played ping pong you and did? sweated through ping pong. <laughs> it's fun. It's the next fun. time you come here, we'll have our table set up. Yeah. Right now it's a mess there. Okay, good. I'm getting good, so watch out. Good. Oh, well, um, that's yeah, and that's where women find. I do have some men that do come to class. It's not necessary not necessarily a lot of men come try Zumba. I think they have it that it's a woman's thing. Right. But there's a lot of really good dancing men that are out For there sure. that would love it. But 60 minutes just goes by like that. Yeah. You know, it's like you're and done. Yeah, and yeah. yeah. So I, I know uh, I know someone who would not, is so like shy about being uncoordinated. They would not go to a class. Mm-hmm. It, do, you, do you get people like that that come in and they're so they feel like they're such a klutz yeah I mean most people feel like a klutz when they come in the first time um, one of the things I set people up for is you know what probably the first couple of classes it's gonna feel like I'm going this way and you're going that way and that's totally normal and it's totally okay so just one of the things I find as an instructor is just speaking to and listening for what somebody's dealing with when they come in. I can tell when somebody's scared to be there. Right. So I can just like let them know it's gonna be okay. Be wherever you want in the room. Laugh lots, smile lots, and don't worry about getting the steps right. Just move your body Yeah. and have fun. Nice. And when you can give it to them like that, for the most part, people that are really afraid they, they'll, they're usually the people that are at the very back yeah. of the class, which is fine. But I always like try to make eye contact with them through the class and yeah. give them like a thumbs up, like you're doing okay, don't worry, <laughs> hang in there, you yeah. know? Yeah. And then they come back. Yeah, after a few, a few classes they get yeah. more comfortable. 
And sometimes people want like a private class because they're really committed to learning the steps, which I can also offer. You know, they can come in 15, 20 minutes before class oh, or I stay see. after class and Learn I'll show the steps, them. So yeah. yeah, I'll break down some of the steps for mm -hmm. them. And Now, how, how much is enough with exercise? I have a friend who does cycling and somebody asked him if his legs are sore and he says, I'm, I'm always sore and I'm always hungry. And I told him that wouldn't make a great book. It wouldn't sell a lot. No, not a lot. <laughs> I no. thought that was a bit. <laughs> no. I thought, like, how much do you think is enough in a week? Like, how? Well, you need to have days of rest. Like, you do need to have that. Um, it depends on what you're looking for. Um, I would say a minimum of two times a week yeah. to a maximum of five, maybe, so maybe this six. This case is two to five hours a week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's not a, yeah. he's not too bad. He's he's in yeah. that that yeah. realm. I I do about twenty four hours a week. So wow. um, I get the whole you're hungry and tired <laughs> all the time or <laughs> achy. Slowly. Sometimes I'm like that. Um, but I religiously take Sundays right. as uh, so I teach one class Saturday at nine and then I'm off again until Monday at 10 a.m. so it's basically yeah. two days it's like have that two-day kind of block that you can yeah. let your body relax I didn't think about it if you're doing 20 24 a week you're doing that much like exercise yeah I eat pretty much anything I want <laughs> <laughs> anytime I want it. yeah but you know what when you're when you're working out yeah. all the time your body doesn't want a lot of the yeah the junk food it, it wants like fruits yeah. and vegetables and I eat a lot of fruits and vegetables we juice at home too yeah, we're big yeah. juicers and it's yeah that's what Rafi and I found that once we start his diet um, all the craving for those sweets is gone yeah, yeah yeah the only kind of sweet stuff I want is if I if I make it at home yeah. like I'll make specific things with like peanut butter coconut oil and like dark dark chocolates or yeah I know you have the recipes on yeah the <laughs> <laughs> but yeah um tell me a bit about the laughter yoga what is that laughter yoga yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um no um it's very fascinating actually I got introduced to it actually through a contact through Facebook told me about it and I said I gotta check this out so it was actually developed out of India by a, a medical doctor Dr. Kataria who was doing um, a thesis on the benefits of laughter like they say laughter yeah. is the best med medicine yeah. so really is it so in India in the mornings they would get up at like 730 in the morning well, before that, actually, they'd be in the park. This is very common in India. So he'd start talking to people in the park saying, would you come laugh with me? So it just kind of started like that. Yeah. It started with jokes. It's developed itself into laughter yoga, which laughter is the exercise and yoga is the breathing that you do with it. So your body actually doesn't know whether you're laughing real or fake. Which is really good news for yeah, everybody, yeah, right? Because yeah. sometimes, like, I don't have nothing. To, I don't have anything yeah. to laugh about for yeah. forty-five minutes. But um, so you bring on the laughter, and the way that you do that is through a childlike playfulness. So we don't tell jokes or anything right. in class, but you no, know, children will just like play with imaginary, yeah. uh, like imaginary friends or imaginary things. Like they be like, "I'm making a milkshake," and they'd be like, "Ah, uh, ah," uh, <laughs> like they're pouring it. And then the laughter comes in when you chug it back. So you're <laughs> 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 pretend you're drinking it. Yeah. And you're doing this in a room full of people. And it's contagious. And it's contagious because you hear other people laughing yeah. and where you some most people start with a fake laugh because that's just yeah. like this is kind of weird to be in a room yeah. laughing with everyone that suddenly they're they're just killing themselves laughing. Yeah. And 45 minutes Sorry, 20 minutes of solid laughter is equivalent to 45 minutes on a rowing machine. Say, say it again. So 20 minutes of solid laughter, like yeah. that deep belly laugh, yeah. is equivalent to 45 minutes on a rowing machine. Wow. That's amazing. So I told the lady that one time, and she <laughs> pretended to do the rowing machine and started laughing. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's good. Wow. That's good. And then we do breathing in between, because when you're laughing, you're opening everything up. So... Many people find in laughter yoga that 
the, the cough a little bit after because you've yeah. really opened up your esophagus and gotten everything just flowing that right I just sometimes you have those people in real life that they laugh yeah. and then it goes into a big cough yeah because like, you're really bringing it yeah, you, yeah but it's good we we don't laugh enough in life so yeah that's for sure yeah so uh, that's interesting so th do you also beside the laughter and the breathing are you doing yoga positions too or not no, no no it, it it's interesting, interesting because people go do i bring a mat do i yeah. come a there's no you downward came, dog yeah no, no downward <laughs> dog laughter or yeah. anything so you just um, hang around laughing and breathing laughing and breathing yeah, so we start See, with just I like, like this breathing. One better than the Zumba. Yeah, I know. It depends on where you're at. Some people really prefer it. I find that my Zumba classes kind of have uh, a little bit of the laughter yoga yeah, in it because right. just because I'm trained in it, I yeah, you bring that. I bring laughter into yeah. Zumba, but yeah, you can come dress normal. Yeah. You will sweat. You will work up a sweat laughing. That's interesting. Um, it's pretty intense. Yeah, I always had the thing about. Um, playfulness being an amazing state mm -hmm. um, actually once I just had a domain the playful God but I never did anything with it. Just <laughs> it but that's showing you my, my thinking yeah I always when you get into that state with some people it's playful it's just the best feeling in the world it yeah. is it is yeah, it's like in the flow just, yeah, yeah. and awesome. what's really cool is you can you can do laughter yoga with a room full of people that have never met each other before and they will feel so connected by the time they leave that there's like a lightness that comes in the room. Like yeah. I've often had, I did it with 200 teenagers over the summer and they were all from different schools all over and we would do 50 teenagers at a time, right? And they'd never met each other. Part of laughter yoga is also making eye contact with another human being. So you're not laughing at them, you're laughing with them. So you, you yeah. it's like, seeing each other in your yeah. souls kind of thing yeah, yeah. and the kids kept coming up to me later on in the day and they're like thank you so much i didn't know anybody here and i feel so connected to all these Breaks people the and yeah. yeah they were they were still lit up yeah. i'm known as the laughter lady i ended up <laughs> in a school the other day and they're like hey you're the laughter lady so yeah they that's remembered awesome. it yeah that sounds like fun yeah how many people are usually in the in the room for laughter yoga, I've had anywhere from 10 to about 60 people per session. Like, Yeah, I did, I did that four sessions in a row with 50 kids each. And by the end of it, oh, my abs were just <laughs> killing me. I was like, my whole yeah. body was just shaking. It was awesome. Yeah. But in a pleasant way, was it really yeah. hard? Yeah, yeah it was, it, I mean, I was hurting yeah. from laughing because yeah. it just like the, the ab workout that you get from laughing. Yeah. We don't think about that enough. No, yeah, I was sore for days. It was awesome. Is there anything else that I that, that you want to add that I didn't ask that you wish I asked? Um, hmm. I don't think so. I think <laughs> every, I think we covered yeah. Yeah. you know everything. I mean, I could say definitely what the work we've done together and uh, with Arctic. I'm yeah. very very happy with what yeah. because I'm I'm constantly creating. I'm always in the creation yeah. stage and. Um, your team here has been amazing just to support me yeah. with all of that so yeah i work really hard on um, like really good customer service we care about it I, yeah i don't want to stress I, I don't want stress i want happy customers yeah <laughs> I, want stress. I want to be happy yeah relax, so we just do things on time and then if there's a problem we fix it and that's it it's gonna keep it simple yeah. yeah and i i find for myself like any company that i deal with communication is like the number yeah. one key um, and that's what keeps coming me having me come back here is your staff are always yeah. communicating like yeah. you know they're letting me know what's going on so that's always important as a business owner that you can yeah know what's going on I know it's it. very frustrating when somebody doesn't communicate I know yeah I've been there. yeah it's like yeah. it's amazing how many people don't communicate and it's like commun everything is solved in communication yeah, exactly so okay yeah. thank you very much yeah thank you this okay. is fun